Oh my god. Warmy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to Mad in the Kitchen with me, Madeline Smithberg. This is our very first edition of Mad in the Kitchen. It's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, way before we even knew what the coronavirus was. Uh, so I thought for my first sort of set of uh, videos, I will concentrate on what I know best. I lived in Italy and uh, I like to think of myself, not seriously, but for fun as the queen of pasta. I'm not talking, let's make pasta a huge fiasco. I'm talking about what real Italians do six nights and six days a week and just make a very simple pasta that you can make while your water, while your pasta is cooking. So right now I have the water uh, boiling and uh, once it starts bubbling, I will salt it probably a lot more than you might think to salt it. But in the meantime, we're gonna make one of my favorite dishes, which is it's a takeoff on a a Tuscan dish called burro salvia, which is butter and sage. And if you get, uh, it's usually served with ravioli in restaurants throughout Tuscany and in Siena. But I just fell in love with the flavors of the butter and the sage. And so I've adapted that to a pasta that you can make with dry pasta. And tonight I'm gonna be making peachy, which is actually a shape of pasta, uh, from the region of Tuscany, Siena, uh, Pienza, and they make it on something called a chitarra, and it's very thick and ropey pasta, and once you have it, you may not ever want another shape in your life. But anyway, I'm gonna be making peachy, which I discovered in Italy and now have delivered on Amazon every other month. Uh, it's gonna be peachy with Burro, that's butter. Salvia, can you see that? This is fresh sage. I happen to have it growing outside. Uh, I definitely think that fresh sage, I'm dropping it all over the kitchen, is better than dried sage. Uh, but you know, you do what you can do. But you can get it in any supermarket as long as you're wearing a mask and social distancing. I am gonna take the butter sage and I'm gonna do some twists on it. I'm gonna caramelize uh, a shallot in the butter to start because basically there's nothing better on planet Earth than shallot that has been sauteed lightly for a while. And then I am gonna mix in frozen peas. Not only are these a great uh, ice pack if you need an ice pack for some inflammation, but they're very delicious. Many people think that frozen peas are actually better than fresh peas, but canned peas sucked. But I'm gonna take some frozen peas and I'm gonna mix them with my caramelized shallots, my butter, and my sage. And then I'm gonna finish it with some parmigiano. Um, I thought I didn't have Parmesan and I, I was, literally on the verge of tears, but then I found this miracle container of Parmesan in the back of my refrigerator, and then I will finish it with a little fresh parsley, because why not? One, two. Three, two. All right, here we go. So before I start, I am going to sharpen my knife. This is my favorite knife. It's a chef's knife. It's called Global. It's a Japanese company. I worship it but that might be a little extreme, but it's a really good knife. So we start just honing it. You concentrate on the end of the knife, the, the wider end, because that quite honestly is where you do most of your cutting. I bet you didn't know that. I certainly didn't know it before I became a chef and took knife skills class. Anyway, I'm putting that away. And now I'm gonna take this shallot and you wanna hold it so that your thumb and the knuckle of your right hand are on opposite sides of the knife. You make a claw 
with your left hand and you hook it down on the shallot and then you just start slicing. It's like a rocking motion. And you can, you know, you can practice until you get really good at it. I never have gotten really good at it. And then you have this little piece at the bottom. So you cut it a different way. Because at the end, you just want to have wonderful morsels of shallots. And now I'm debating, do I leave these whole? But I think I'm going to cut them in half. I'm cutting them in half. Okay, and now I take my sage. I'm gonna leave a couple of leaves to garnish it at the end because I think pretty is fun. But then other than that, I crumple it up into like a little mush. And then once again, with the rocking motion, I cut it into very fine strips. So that's your salvia. And you cannot believe how delicious. So now I'm gonna turn on the stove. I'm on the front burner, and I'm going to go to like a medium heat. Nah, I'm going to go a little bit higher. So the whole thing that you're doing when you're cooking is you are dancing with your heat levels. You want, I think that home cooks, and that's what we chefs call you guys, are really scared to use heat. And then when you do use it, you don't know how to moderate it. So that's something that I'm gonna try to work on because when I learned that, it blew my mind. There are like 100 different variations that you have on your stove with your pan. But anyway, I'm heating this up, heating this up, heating this up. And now I'm gonna add my butter. I always use unsalted butter. I try to use organic unsalted butter. But right now, in the world that we live in, I don't think we have that many choices. So I'm just using butter that I bought at uh, QFC, which is like a Kroger store. It's actually great. So no, that's too hot, that's too hot. So I'm gonna turn it down. I'm letting the butter just sort of sizzle. Next, I'm adding the sage. I wish you could smell this. I wish this was like smell o vision. Because, oh my God, sage with butter is so fucking perfect. And now, not being fancy, I'm going to throw in my shallots. I'm gonna find the perfect tool. And I'm going to turn it up a little. You know, you don't want to burn your butter, but look how beautiful this is. Oh. There, look, it's bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And this is just butter, sage, and shallots. And I'm sorry, but you could take a bath in it. I mean, it probably wouldn't clean you, but you could take a bath in butter and sage. All right, Sam, we're moving over here to our pot. So let's see, let's see if we have any bubbles happening. Up, oh! we got some bubbles happening in our pasta water. So we're gonna take some corpse kosher salt. This happens to be the Kroger brand. Doesn't really matter. And now here's another chef thing where we, you know, we think of you guys as home cooks and we laugh at you. You're gonna put more salt in it than you probably would ever imagine putting in. Ride with me here. It will taste amazing. And we're putting that on. The whole idea here is that this is not a fancy, special, we're gonna take five hours. No, we're literally cooking a meal in the time that it takes our water to boil and our pasta to cook. We're making a sauce that you can serve your family that is absolutely delicious, but is not excessively labor intensive. It's not that I shy away from labor. I love labor. I love cooking a turkey. I love, I love making soups that cook all day. This is a different thing. There are seven days in the week 
and you can't be a genius on all of them. You gotta get the food on the friggin' table, feed the people, feed the children. So this is what we have happening now. I'm gonna turn it up even a little more. So now I'm going to full blown high. I'm going to high. I'm adding a little bit of uh, organic, free range, cage free, constantly massaged chicken uh, broth. And uh, I'm gonna just smash it in because I feel like my butter is cooking too hard and my, I'm going to the water. My water is not quite boiling. Although in about a minute, I'm gonna throw it in anyway because even though it's not boiling, it's still hot enough to cook pasta. So let's keep this guy going. Uh, kitchen tools, tweezers, and I'm gonna cut it off. And I'm gonna go over to the pasta pot, hold it up there. And I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be good. Uh, six little bales of peachy. And now into the burro salvia uh, shallot mixture, I'm gonna put frozen peas. I don't even thaw them or defrost them. I just throw them in. And then I zip them up. And you know what I'm going to do then? Just because. I'm going to put a little more butter. When in doubt, a little more butter. Usually a little more alcohol. A little more broth. Uh, but right now I'm just sticking a little more butter. And I'm gonna let that cook. Uh, I decided about a minute ago that this needed a little bit of chicken broth. So in case you have are just tuning in now, I've added a little bit of chicken broth to my butter, sage, caramelo sh shallots uh, mixture, which is gonna be the most delicious pasta sauce in the world in about seven minutes. All right, here we go. It's Matt in the kitchen, and we are in for the final leg of our tiny little food marathon. First of all, let's turn off this annoying beeping. It tells me that my pasta is done. So I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna get some. I love my, I love my mitts. I really do. They make me feel super safe and they make me be able to like go in to kick to ovens and situations that you might not want to go into, but you're fine because you've got your mitts. Anyway, we're going to dump the pasta. We're going to keep the spoon close. We've turned it off. We're going to take it over to the sink. And we're going to go. We're dumping the pasta. Get a little facial. It's all good. And I'm going back and I'm going to shake, 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 shake. And then I'm going to throw it into the pot with the peas and the butter and the sage and the shallots and the chicken broth. And I'm gonna lather it up with its own beautiful liquid. And then I'm gonna add Thanks, packaging. Shaved Parmigiano Reggiano, otherwise known as, I don't know what it's known as. How would I possibly know that? So I'm gonna go very generously with the Parmigiano. 
I'm gonna definitely turn this heat down to low. And then I'm gonna take my fresh parsley, flat leaf Italian parsley. The curly kind is fine for tabbouleh and in a pinch, but you want your flat leaf Italian parsley. And what I have been doing, cause there's not a lot of it around, is buying the plants. I'm buying plants and I'm planting parsley, sage, zucchini, garlic, shallots, broccoli. Last year, the rabbits friggin' killed me. Anyway, here we are. I'm gonna put some salt. I know, I know, I know, it's a lot of salt, but guess what? Anything you've ever eaten in your life that has stopped you in your tracks and fills you with something approaching a symphony had more salt than you like to eat. Anyway, this is fresh ground pepper. I buy this at Trader Joe's or Costco. And it is a game changer. All right. Get ready. Look at that. Oh! That's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna <laughs> toss it now. You can, Sam, you can show them you're tossing. Honky, gaggy, boogie, mama, roo, ra, ra. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. This is, Sam is really lucky he gets to actually eat this. So now, I put our plates in the microwave for 45 seconds. Just a nice touch. You don't want to go make a beautiful meal like this and serve it on a cold plate. I never really thought about that, but for Sam, it's an issue. So now I'm all over it. And it's the 45 second rule. So we're gonna go ahead and sew. I'm gonna use tongs. I love tongs. Tongs have changed my life. You can serve anything with tongs. Like I have like probably 14 sets of tongs and I don't regret anyone in the group. So here we're gonna go. Grab the pasta. No, oh, come on. And we're gonna put it in our plate. And then we're gonna put a little more Parmigiano. No, wait, I had a pretty thing. I guess it disappeared. Ah, oh, here it is. A little tiny. Ta-da! Take a picture. I'll clean the plate. Oh my god. Warmy? Oh my god. Oh my god.